solution Hello guys and welcome to another episode of the Rise with Red Bull Leipzig. Now here's something I've wanted to show you in the past but I've just never really thought about it when it comes to recording but I'm here. We're on my manager profile and I'll show you how I've done over the last three and a half seasons. Currently in my fourth season with Red Bull Leipzig. So here is my profile as the manager so far. So let's have a look at it and see what it's all about. So I'm Scottish, I'm 29 years old in the game, 1589, 1st of May 1989, that is my actual date of birth, I am 26 years old. Nearly two star, just about two star reputation, 133 games played as manager of Red Bull Leipzig, 58 games won. Full time contract on £4,200 per week, which is the lowest I could possibly take. The contract started in 2016 in March, we got contract talks and accepted with no v visions and no philosophies. That currently runs for the next five years until June 2023. In terms of relationships, with the best opinion of me is Marcus Gisdol, who I don't actually know, Miroslav Klosa, who you all know, and Carlo Ancelotti for some strange reason. Worst opinion of me, Carsten Janka, the former German international, Evard Lienen, Torsten Liebernecht, Norbert Meyer, and Frank Schmidt. Tactical side of things, I prefer a 4-4-2, which is the case right now we're playing that, but in the past it's not always been that situation. Sometimes it has, sometimes it's not, but I guess they had to select one and that's what they went with. We like to play cautiously, which I probably disagree with. Pressing style is mixed, marking style is mixed. I'm a man marker, I don't do zonal, I love to man mark. Coaching style is attacking, I'd probably agree with that. The press conference side of thing is probably correct, they're more used to seeing my assistant managers, sometimes now and then I will take them, but my door is always open if the players want to come and see me with regards to new contracts or wanting to make moves to other clubs, which is not a problem as long as we get good value for them. Attribute wise, reputation is slightly grown, media handling is very low, tactical consistency is pretty high, as is hands on approach, because I like to take control of all my tactical thinkings and tactical plans. Managing on finances is very good. It's very high. I'm very good when it comes to finances. I won't overpay. I think I've only got two two players even close to £50,000 per week. One is 50 bang on. One is just below it. The rest are about 30000 and under. Handling of team discipline. If you get sent off with a straight red, you get issued warnings and you get fines. I found a tip, guys. Some people don't, don't seem to see it, but... If you give a guy who's got a straight red card a fine, he accepts it. If you give him a fine when he's got a yellow then a red, he tends to be unhappy with it. Loyalty to players, I'm surprised with that. I thought it would be quite higher because I've still got a good base of the team that was here when I arrived. Domestic player bias, well that's a bit of both really. I like to look far and wide for players. I've brought in players from Egypt, from Nigeria, from South Africa. I've also brought players in from Germany. In terms of my Tactical or my stats, should I say, my attributes. Attacking is 13, 12, defending. Player knowledge is 10, I think that should be higher. You, uh, youngster knowledge, I think, should be higher than 10. The rest are pretty poor. Working with youngsters, no. I have said before, you cannot use regens that come through your system in Germany until they're 17. If you can't use them until they're 17, although I do get them tutored and I do train them, put them in the first team for pre season, you can. But when it comes to playing matches, you can't use them. So I think that is an absolute bit of a joke, really. It's the rules in real life, but that's the way it is. But it's not possible for me to really get higher than that, which is a real, real shame. I've got one that is 17 in about four or five months' time, so hopefully I can use him. Knowledge of Germany is really good. Scotland is really good, of course, my birthplace. England, I'm half English due to my family being from Newcastle. So that is half. It should be probably higher, though. Career stats, this is an interesting one, 133 games played, 58-1, 29 drawn, 46 loss. Of course I did start in the Bundesliga 2, we failed to get promotion after losing in the playoffs in the Season 1 against Hertha Berlin. Season 2, we won against Werder Bremen in the playoffs. Season 3, we finished I think 11th or 12th and we're currently in Season 4. Goals scored, 253, I'm happy with that, 203 conceded. Really disappointed with that. I've always said that I need to shore up my defence. And even right now, I'm not currently happy with my defence. Goal difference is 50. Win percentage is 43. Not bad considering I started in the league below. But hopefully now, I'm starting to make a real name for myself in the German National Bundesliga. 
So here is a little bit more personal information. Full name, James Beattie. Middle name, Scott. You can't see that. Coaching qualifications. I started off at the bottom. Continental C licence. Currently studying for the Continental B licence. Favourite clubs, Newcastle. I'm a one-club man. If you ask me to choose between my club and country, it's club every day. And I choose Newcastle United because that is where all my family are from. As I said, reputation is nearly two. Past playing experience as Sunday League footballer. That's the very bottom. I had no qualifications and no experience of playing football in terms of the game. Of course, I did used to play when I was a little bit younger before I started to have a family and start to move on in the job world, which I am now a chef. Based in Germany, that's where I'm currently playing. I'm playing my trade in this save. Of course, this is my beta save. It's the only save I currently have going along with my Bly save, but this is my main one. Finally, on the player... Profile, or the manager profile should I say, nationality is Scottish, no youth caps, place of birth Dundee, which is correct, I now live in Montrose, have done most of my life. Language spoken, English fluent, German fluent, which is something that has come about on this, I did not put that in there. But three and a half years in Germany, they've made me fluent in German, other nationalities is English. So that's enough talking about me, you've seen my profile as the manager of Red Bull Leipzig, and how my attributes are matching up. Let's get into today's episode. So before today's live com and I show you the league table and I update you on the previous matches since the last live com against Paderborn, we will quickly run through stats of the players this season so far. So top in the rankest with appearances, I think these are the only three to play every game. I don't actually recall not starting them in any game this season so far. The goalkeeper Bart Dragowski, Alex Grimaldo, the new signing at left back, and Marcel Sabitzer, of course wanted as he always is because he's the best player in my team. They're the three that have played every single game this season. Will Hughes has only missed one. Upamakano, surprisingly, is up there in fifth with 15 games. Papadopoulos with 13. There's a lot of players still in double figures and a lot of players that have not really been involved also this season so far. Leading the goalscoring charts for us is Yusuf Poulsen with six, Davies Serka with five, Tomas Kabachi with four, two for Sabitz or Yunez and Ramondi, one for Hughes, Upamakano, Klosterman, Sani and Unal have actually just brought into the team because I feel like we need a bit more firepower up front. He's going to play as the complete forward over the next short period of time. There are a few players that can play in that role. I don't use it often. Ibrahimovic I used in Fantasy Draft. Once he was immense at that role. You have to be big, strong, powerful, can lead the line and play a few different types of roles to be the complete forward in any team. Now we're talking about assist. Now leading the way, as you'd expect, is Marcel Sabitzer. He's got one in three for every game he plays. Six assists in 18. Next after him, Selka with three, Gabachi with three, Yunez with three, Sani and Grimaldo with two apiece. One for the following, Hughes, Unal, Papadopoulos and Bush. Leading the way for the key passes is Will Hughes with 56, Grimaldo with 50, 49 for Sabitzer. And below those three, the rest are under 40. With Gabachi, who has really started to get coming to his own and started to be really involved in this first team, although his average rating doesn't quite reflect that. 39 for him, 37 for Selka, and below that is Yunus with 25, Poulsen 23, and Sane with 21. The rest are below 20. So 18 games played in total this season, and 8 times my players have been named Man of the Match. 2 for Will Hughes, 2 for Marcel Sabitzer, 2 for Davy Selka, and 2 for Amin Yunez. The rest of the team don't currently have any between them. In terms of highest rating so far, with average over the course of the season, Sabitzer leads the way as you'd expect, with 7.31, 7.25 for Yunez and Hughes. Hughes surprises me, he's not been involved as much as I'd like. He has got a good amount of key passes, but assists and goals haven't really been his thing so far. 7.17 for Sani, 7.09 for Grimaldo, 7.05 for Selka, and 7 bang on for Mohamed Besic, who's keeping the unhappy and grumpy Josh Kimmich out of the squad, who I signed for big money, and he's been in a grump all season. For reasons I explained in the past, which he was promised to be captain of the squad when he arrived, but I forgot about it. The, game after, the day after his debut, he complained and he's been unhappy ever since. We do currently have two players injured at the moment. We have Amin Yunus, a key player, is out for four weeks and Davy Selka will be out injured for three to four days, which was a little bit longer than that, but he's just came back. Here he is here, he's just signed a new contract worth £38,000 per week, 
real quality player, a player that I want to build this save around when I first initially started it. 92 appearances for Leipzig in total and he currently has 38 goals in that time. Plays as a defensive forward more often than not, so contributes as well to assists as, as well as goals. We do currently have one player in on trial, a player I probably won't sign, but he's got decent attributes. If this guy was, say, three years younger, I probably would take him on board with those crossing and corner attributes, as well as some decent mentals and some very good physical stats. He's left foot, fairly determined in a midfielder, plays on the left-hand side, but I'm very much covered there with Younes and Sani. Ibrahim Benali is his name, three caps for the Morocco first team, so... I might actually sign him and just look to sell him on pretty quickly. Five caps for the under-20 side and one goal. He's wanted by a couple of clubs. Two-star ability for potential and one-and-a-half-star current ability. He did play 91 times for Karubga. Eight goals in that time. They currently play, or do play, should I say, in Morocco, his native country. So we'll see where we go with him. We might bring him in and maybe try to sell him on for a bit of cash. So the last time you were with us was Paderborn away when we lost 2-1. We then played Hamburg at home and we lost 3-1 in that game and I tried a different skin but it didn't appear to be working because when I played the match it was blacked out and it was like the floodlights had failed and I couldn't actually see anything what was going on at all. We then played Hoffenheim away, we drew 1-1, Poulsen scoring in three games in a row. We then beat Hanover at home 2-0, Davy Selka double before drawing away in a TV match against Frankfurt 0-0 and we just beat Bochum 2-1 at home. Pretty comfortable game, we played quite well, they did score late on to make it a bit of squeaky bum time at the end but here we are today against Dortmund who currently sit third. We play at the Red Bull Arena, our second of three home matches in a row and we're currently unbeaten in the last four having picked up two clean sheets in that time. So here is the current league table, we're expected to finish in the top half, as you can see we're sitting 12. 16 games played, there are 34 in the league campaign in total, 6-1, 4 drew, 6 lost, 20 scored, 25 conceded which is far too much for my liking, 22 points we are on. But as you can see from 13th to 7th is separated by 3 points and below 13th, 14th to the bottom they have fell adrift by 6 points. So. It looks like there's a breakaway from that gap already. Hopefully we can get closer to the top eight this season. Again, I can say we're only two points away from seventh place Gladbach. So it's really tight at the moment. But hopefully two, three wins in a row can push you right up that table. And as you can see, I said before, Dortmund are currently sitting in third. They are our opponents today. We welcome them to the Red Bull Arena. And hopefully it's a good game, better than the last two live comms. A defeat against Paderborn and a board draw against Mans. So here we are, game day, and here is the lineups. We line up with our 4 4 2. Dragowski, Grimaldo recently changed to a complete wing back. Hopefully, he can get more assists that way. Papadopoulos, Upamakano, Bush at right back. Sabitzer, Besic, Hughes, Sani. Of course, Younes is injured. N is up front, who's coming to the squad decently. Urari as well up top as the defensive forward. On the bench, Kaufman, Klostman, Young, Kimmich, Zatella, Selka, who's not fully fit, and Gabachi. For Dortmund, they have Berkey, Schmelzer, Hummels, Manolas, Piszczek, Royce, Gundogan, Weigel, Mkhitaryan, Gerson and Werner playing a 4-4-1-1. I've got a feeling that Mkhitaryan and Royce may be switching over. Frequently on the bench, they have Ryman, Ginter, Brand, Pulisic, Bender, Tolian and Bittencourt. So the boys have been briefed, they've been to told to go out on a venge for the defeat that we suffered at the hands of Dortmund the last time round. As usual, match stats on the left hand side, the manager comments coming up on the right hand side as we play, and the feedback from my assistant manager as there is no highlight at the time. Captain today, Yusef Poulsen, and Pisek has a corner, put it in Gundogan, Manolas. First chance going to come from Dortmund of the match here, Manolas, Pisek. Takes a long shot, falls back to Royce, Schmelter, and a good block. Sani, Enes. Be interested to see how that complete forward role works. Come in for his first start of the season last game and did score, incidentally, as the complete forward. We've also changed our approach of play. We usually play a counter-attacking play, but we've decided to try and go for a controlling game, a possession game, recently 
this being our toughest test since we changed that system. As you can see, we've only got 39% possession, so it's not quite working. An offside goal there from Marcos, Marco Royce. But yeah, a new change of system, hopefully it works. This is a tough test. It's worked over the last four games, but we've not played teams that are really more dominant than us until now. Royce on the right-hand side. Weigel. Gerson. Werner. He was very good against us when he played for Stuttgart. Incidentally, the game after he scored goals against us, he moved to Dortmund for big, big money. Sabitzer. Hughes. Enes. Can he play it wide? Urari tries to. It doesn't quite make it. Besic again with the yellow card. That is happening all the time. I'm going to check his yellow cards for the season so far after this match. He's already been suspended for five yellow cards this season. And we've only played 16 games in the league. Pichek. Gundogan. Weigel. Werner. Straight at the goalkeeper and it's away. Corner kick to Dortmund. Five shots, two on target for Dortmund. Sabitzer. Enes. Urari, can he play it wide again? And it doesn't come to anything and the highlight swiftly moves on. Sabitzer and Hughes currently playing with sevens as is Marnon Bush. Signed on cheap last season, Marnon Bush, but he hasn't quite done as well this season as he did last season. A right back may be a position we look at in the transfer window coming up. We do have five million in the bank to look to the either the loan market. Poulsen, that's an unlucky chance straight at Berkey. Yes, the transfer market coming up. We have five million. We can look to the loan market. We can look to the pre-contract market, which is very exciting. This is the last game before the winter break. We will come back at the end of January to play. And yes, yeah, so, five million to play with and try and sign a couple of players. I'm looking for a central defender, the most, and potentially a right back if we can make a sale or two. Not that I'm actively looking to sell anybody in particular at the moment, but we'll see what sort of bids come in. Dragowski, Bush, Sabitzer, Poulsen. Goes for an audacious shot and it goes over. Bit ambitious there. Half time and there it goes. So we'll look to see what we can change up, see what we can do. We might change the system here because we are playing against a team that usually would control the game against us. So what we're doing guys is we're keeping the formation the same, we're changing the system. We're going from a control end to our counter that we previously changed from just four games ago. We've upped the tempo, we decided we're going to exploit the flanks, hopefully our wing players can get on the ball more. We're going to use direct passing, pass into space and look for the overlap and we've took off, hit early crosses. Run at defence also on, we're going to change stick to position to roam from position and be a little bit more expressive also. So hopefully this can change up, we can change our system and catch Borussia Dortmund out. Second half to get underway, we've told the guys that they can still come out with a win tonight. We can, it's 0-0. There's been no real dominant team so far. It's not been a team, a game full of chances. Other than a couple of direct long shots at the goalkeeper. Royce goes out for a goal kick. Royce with the corner. And it's put wide. I think from Hummels, was it? Not quite sure, didn't see that there. 50 minutes gone here. Fifty one percent possession, Dortmund just shading that stat. Weigel. Gerson. Werner and it goes straight to Dragowski. No clear cut chances so far in this game. Weigel. Pishek, Gundogan, Weigel, Werner. And it goes out, blocked by the central defender, and it's a Dortmund throw. I think we will make a substitute here. We'll bring on Gabachi for Enes Unal, and we'll change him to a poacher. And we'll bring on Selka. Direct swap for Yusuf Poulsen in that defensive forward role. Double change up front, confirmation of that. Selka and Gabachi on for Poulsen and Unal, who have been really ineffective today. Gabachi, 
Hughes. Will Hughes loses the ball on the edge of the opposing 18-yard area, but we retrieve it. Dragowski plays it long. Gundogan picks it up. Guess on the number nine. Weigel puts it wide of the right-hand post. A damaged heel and injury to Gerson of Dortmund there. Looks like they will have to make a change soon. Royce and he puts it out with poor control following the pass from Gundogan. 66 minutes gone here. We'll just encourage the lads like to see a bit more creativity really and see a bit more from them because it's us that hasn't really done much in this game so far Pusilic the substitute just came on Gerson is still on incidentally carrying that damaged heel injury Gabachi Thomas Gabachi and it was a great last ditch tackle from Pisek I think Sabitzer who incidentally is on a promise that if Dortmund make a bid that matches our valuation, I should let him go. Which, I'll be honest, I can't see that happening. Great, great player. I'd be sad to lose my best player. But I did manage to offer him a contract around 2-3 months ago and take out that 14 million release clause, which I'm pleased about, which means... The ball is in my park and he can't just talk to clubs after a bid is accepted. 85 minutes gone here. Will there be any last sucker punches from either team? Pisek, Royce. Pusilic to number 20. Royce. Weigel. And I think it hit the post there, but Pisek is offside. I think it was a save onto the post there. Royce with the free kick. Royce again, away from Besic. Manolas. Royce again. Grimaldo. Gabacci. Papadopoulos. Plays a great pass forward. Comes to nothing. Gabacci. Could be the last chance of the game. Peace check. Royce on the right-hand side. He stayed there most of the game, actually. Mkhitaryan, who's meant to play on the left. He's come right inside. Weigel. It's Royce, and it's straight at Dragowski, thankfully. Royce again. Sabitzer, can he break? He's, oh, I thought he played a superb pass, but a great interception from Pisek, who's played very well today. Selka. Loses the ball to Schmelzer. Mkhitaryan. Puslic on the left-hand side now. Weigel. Mkhitaryan. Brand. Former loanee of ours, of course, from Leverkusen. Brand. Stand up. Don't dive in. Weigel. Puslic. Ginter, another former player of ours. Or loanee of ours. Sorry. Schmelter, and there we go. Full time, guys. A decent result against Dortmund. 0 0. Another clean sheet. Third and five. We're five unbeaten. And it's pretty good considering we didn't play that. Well, player of the match, Mohamed Besic, which I'm pretty pleased about. His form has come on recently. And it shows how far we've come in three and a half seasons that we're getting good results at home against big clubs such as Borussia Dortmund. So that draw, that 0-0 draw, puts us to 11th with exactly half of the season gone. Hopefully we can press on. We're only six points away from fifth place Darmstadt, which of course is a European spot. You never, never know. But my aim this season is to be in at least the top eight, getting the top half solid, really cement our spot in the Bundesliga, in our second season in this league, and really become a force in my third season and the fifth season in this save in total. Yes, yeah, so hopefully we can establish ourselves this season in a top half team. And next season, who knows? It will be our fifth fifth season in the career in this series. And hopefully we can start to press on for maybe even a title push eventually. But we do have to shore up the squad in some parts, in particular central defence, probably at right back as well. And maybe on the left of midfield and potentially one in the middle of the park. 
So it's now time for the winter break after that 0-0 home match against Dortmund. Next up we play Schalke on the 26th of January which will be the only match in January of course and the transfer window will be shut by the time we get to the Cologne away match. And then we can really wrap up who we've signed, who we've brought in, who we've sold and if we've made any tactical changes. And of course we do have the young Egyptian kid who I will show you again in the next episode. I'm really excited about him. We then play Leverkusen at home on the 9th of February, but the next match we'll come back to, guys, is one of our old foes. On the 16th of February, hopefully Regen Day will be close by then. We will go to the Mercedes-Benz Arena away to Stuttgart, who currently sit in 10th. As you know, they beat us last season when we had a real chance to get to the DFB Pokal final, and it never happened. Anyway guys, thanks for checking out this episode of the Rise of Red Bull Leagues. I hope you're enjoying it. It still is my beta save from when the game came out. And I will see you in 56 days game time for Stuttgart away. And as ever guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you again very soon.